Why is enriching the lives and uh, opportunities for military spouses an important cause in your heart? Well, you know, it's interesting. When I became second lady, uh, a lot of groups uh, reached out to me and wanted me to kind of be the champion for their issue. A lot of veterans groups. And I just felt like, as much as I love our veterans, I just felt like there wasn't enough of a voice for military spouses. And so I decided I wanted to help elevate and encourage military spouses. Why was it important to come here to Fort Campbell? and connect with the military spouses? Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of fun. Uh, Mrs. Esper and I have decided we wanted to go and visit lots of different bases this year. So about one or two a month we go and visit and we get a briefing on the base. Um, I also have an opportunity to go visit the art therapy program. That's my other main initiative is art therapy for treating uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And um, so the other thing is, I love to meet with military spouses because I think they're under-encouraged. Um, when I started this campaign, uh, I decided it would be important to go speak to military spouses because I'm not a military spouse and ask them, what is one thing that you would like me to do? If I could accomplish one thing, what would it be? Don't give me a laundry list. And over and over, these spouses asked for help with employment licensing. Um, you know, they move every two or three years, and every time they move, they have to renew their license in the next state. And sometimes it can take a year or two just to get the license. And I just feel like we're asking them to move. So we should see what we can do in the different states. And we're very excited because uh, the 2020 National Defense Authorization Act that just came out actually authorizes the DOD to help fund interstate compacts for all of the states so that now states might be more open to letting a spouse use their license from one state when they move to another. What do you hope to accomplish through visiting military installations and the spouse employment centers? Mm -hmm. Well, I think what's important is, is to let them know some of the changes that have just happened. Uh, one of them is they can get reimbursement up to $1,000 now instead of 500 I always like to tell them about Military One Source. also. That's a place they can call for uh, any issue that they might have. So uh, also LinkedIn Premium allows uh, military spouses every time they change a duty station uh, to have one free year. So there are things that I think maybe the spouses aren't aware of, and so we try and load my remarks with information that they can actually take away from my speech and say, okay, I can go do this, I can go do that. Um, we also want them to know that we're working with businesses and organizations around the United States to come up with creative ways to hire military spouses. Because for businesses, from their standpoint, this military spouse is gonna leave in two years, right when I get them trained. So it's important to come up with creative ways to have a military spouse be trained in, in a national company and then take that training to the next place uh, that they move to. So we're working with Hiring Our Heroes. Uh, we've had two summits at the White House with businesses. The federal government is now, uh, the president signed a, um, an executive order telling the federal government do what you can to make it easier for military spouses who want employment in the federal government. So there are a lot of things out there that a spouse might not be aware that they can go to um, because we want them to be fulfilled. We want them to be able to work in their chosen career if possible. And so um, that directly affects our military readiness because if the spouse is happy, and they enjoy military life because they also have a career, um, then their military spouse is probably going to stay in the military longer. Um, what would you say makes a strong military spouse resource center? Well, I think um, one of the things that you do at Fort Campbell is uh, they actually have a grant where they actually are able to come alongside financially. So if a spouse has an issue where um, 
they're trying to get employment, but there's a financial issue that's getting in their way, maybe childcare. Um, they can actually come alongside. So I think it's important um, when you have them in a, a facility on base that's supposed to be there to help military spouses get employment. Um, one of the things that's good to do is to train them, help them write a resume, help them practice getting an interview, help them to be aware these are the jobs in your field that are out there. Uh, let's get ready for an interview. Um, let's help them the first month with childcare. There are a lot of things where we can come alongside our spouses and a lot of spouses just maybe aren't aware of that. Well, I just want to say we're so proud of our military spouses. Um, we want them to be fulfilled. Um, you know, when you have a job, you know, it gives you purpose in your life. And you want to get up in the morning and you want to go have coffee with your colleagues. And, and you have a, a purpose that you're working toward and fulfillment at the end of the day. You also have added income. Um, it just helps with mental health as well. It's, it's, it's nice to have a place that's yours, especially military spouses, when their spouse is deployed, it can be a lonely time. And um, extra income to say, okay, I have some extra income, the kids and I can go out for pizza this weekend, it just helps everybody get through those deployments. So we want to come alongside, and so we just want the spouses to know we see you, we hear you, and we stand with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.